Hey everybody, it's Rob from Man Sewing and I cannot believe I get to present this quilt to you today. That's right, this is the very first quilt I ever made, my first pattern I ever designed, originally known as the Dolphin Dance back in 2001. That's right, I've been making quilts and patterns almost that long, even though most of you are just now getting to know me through Man Sewing. So, hello again. Anyways, this is the dolphin dance, but we're calling it the simple strip scramble because that's exactly what it is. As we dive into the supplies, I have all of this written down for you, but we kind of use a variety of different kinds of cuts and we're gonna build this quilt in two major sections. First, our strip set rows, and then second, we're gonna build our theme rows. So when you're doing your strip set rows, you're gonna need four half yards. I have a light, I have what I call two mediums, and let's not get too sensitive about color value, they're just names, okay? And then I also have what I consider a dark. And when I mean color value, yes, my medium and my dark are similar, but you can see in the quilt that you have a lot of movement just through these four fabrics. So our first step, we're gonna use these four half yards, the dark, the two mediums, and the light. But you'll also need roughly a yard of your theme fabric. So this theme fabric here, these are all from Robert Kaufman that I'm using, a variety of batiks and some of their naturescapes and things. That theme fabric is seen over here and here, down in the bottom row, I'm not sure if you're catching that. And I also have what I refer to as kind of a pillow panel, which are these wonderful fabrics that come with these squares in them. You don't actually have to use a pillow panel, but something that's an additional theme fabric, right? And that's seen up here, right here, and there's another one down here in the bottom. So when I made my very first one, I used a pillow panel and that's what they were called back then because we were making quillows. Hey, maybe that'll be another good tutorial one of these days, a quillow for you. <laughs> Look it up if you don't know what a quillow is, they're hilarious, okay? And then eventually we're gonna get onto our inner and our outer borders. So for your inner border, you need 3 8 of a yard. Your outer border, you need 7 8 of a yard. Some of you are going to make this quilt grow. So if you're going to make your quilt grow, don't purchase your inner and outer border yet because that yardage I gave you fits this quilt, if you know what I'm saying. Now, let's get ready to cut this stuff up. And like I said, we're gonna start with our theme set rows, or our strip set rows, I should call them. And if you're, as you're thinking about this, think about it in all different kinds of fabric. I've seen it done in Laurel Birch Horses, and coffee, and blue and white china, and all kinds of fun things. This is really to, meant to design to work through all of your theme fabrics. So, I told you you needed four half yards. The dark, the two mediums, and the light. Now that you have the dark in your hand, let's set it aside. We're not gonna use that just yet, okay? But for the medium, the two mediums and the light, we're gonna cut ourselves a series of strips. All three of these fabrics, I need you to please cut two at two and a half inches by the 45, and also two more at four and a half inches by the 45. But we're gonna do something a little special with our light colored fabric. I also need one extra inch and a half up here. So let me show you how I'm gonna cut this down. I'm just unfolding it. Okay, and always a good idea to true an edge. I'm putting my ruler on my fold at the one inch mark because I like to start one inch into my ruler so that I'm not hitting the corner of the ruler with the rotary cutter because that'll nick your blade. Okay, we'll flip that over. And my first cut I'm gonna take is the one and a half inch. This is unique just to the light fabric. The two mediums, you do not need that one and a half inch strip. Now let's cut our two and a halves. And I'm using the marks on my ruler instead of the marks on my mat for my cutting. That way my strips are nice and parallel. Okay, so that's the two two and a halves. And now we need two four and a halves. Okay, and you're gonna have a little bit left over of your light, and because you did not take the one and a half inch strip off of your two mediums, you're gonna have a little bit more left over, and this is how folks start to use some of their additional fabrics to help their quilt grow, all right? Now, once you have all of your fabrics cut, 
like I do, haha, -ha, we're going to begin our scramble. So the first thing is let's crack the eggs and get the one and a half inch strip out of our way. We're going to put this in once all of the rows are built. Okay, so that's out of our way. Now we're going to build groups of families, okay? And I'm just going to leave these folded so we can keep them organized. But the truth of the matter is we have two rules, okay? So I divide my skinny strips up and my wide strips up. And most of these kinds of fabrics generally are... Um, what I want to say directional prints. So we want to be very careful to keep everything heading in the correct direction. And we're, like I said, we have two sets of rules. First set of rules is we're building families. So every family has a different dad or a different wide four and a half inch strip in the top position. Sorry, moms out there, but I just have to say it that way because I'm a dad. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to set this one aside. Take another one of these. And another one of these. And so now I'm just going to slide in basically another one of my large pieces or my four and a half inch pieces. So this kind of becomes the mom. And now we have happy families, so we always get twins. And the twins are born and they're always just slightly different than the mom and the dad. So what I want you to do is build all three of your stacks first before you sew anything, okay? So this is one stack. The next stack, I'm going to bring in that white, okay? And then I'm going to look here and I see that I have my lighter of my two mediums in that middle position. So now I'm bringing my darker of my two mediums into that position. And therefore, based on process of elimination, I now also have a new set of twins. Do you see how I'm doing that? I'm keeping all three fabrics showing in each of the rows, but I'm always keeping my skinny sets together and then a different in the wide, and I always have a different in the top position, okay? So the last one oops, should work perfectly that I now have my light of my two mediums in the top. Got a new set of twins born. And just like that. Now, to help keep this tutorial rolling along, haha, we're not going to actually show you how to sew all of these together, but I'm going to encourage you to use a nice, accurate quarter inch seam allowance. I've got a fun little quick tip on that if you need. And I'm just going to ask you now to go ahead and sew these groups of strips together, and then we're going to start setting up for another series of cuts. So while you're getting your stuff stitched together, I'm going to clear off my table, bring in a finished one, and show you how to cut it all up. Oh great, you did a fantastic job sewing all this all together. Very well done. Look how nice mine came out as well. Now, what you're really working through here in the quilt, my goal is to make it look like the light is shifting through the water as it comes down, and I'm gonna teach you how to make that happen. There's a secret block that shifts everything around there. We're getting there. But I also want you to be thinking about this while we start working on our cuts. If you'll notice, I have my lightest of my fabrics in this position. Now my light of my medium is kind of in the middle row. So I'm just kind of starting to organize these in my brain. And then I also have my darker of my mediums thick piece down in the bottom row, okay? We're going to cut these. You're going to cut all three of your strip set rows the same. I'll show you on this one here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do, and it doesn't matter which direction because we're basically going to use these from both sides, is I'm going to go ahead and trim off a selvage. Now check this out. This is a cool trick you should all know. When I'm trimming my strip set rows. I'm actually looking at the way that the ruler hits on my seam allowances. So that may, way I'm trying to make sure that everything is nice and crisp and parallel or square while I'm cutting this, even though they're rectangles. Okay, so I'm trimming like that. And then the first cut we need, and this again is for all three of them, is an 11 and a half inch cut. 12 and a half inch square sure helps with this project. So I'm going to drop my 11 and a half inch on there, mark I should say, and I'm going to slide down just a little bit. This time I'm being very cautious not to nick my ruler. Okay, so you have an 11 and a half inch cut, set that aside, and now we're going to make from here two more, and they're going to be five and a half inches. So I've got five and a half right there. One and two. 
Okay, and now we're going to do two two and a halves as well. <laughs> two and a half, just like that. One of those, and another one. Okay, and at this point, yes, you do have some leftover fabric, and this is also how you can make your quilt grow. This is a perfect size to kind of lay over yourself while you're watching TV, working on your computer, something like that. But if you really wanted it to fit a, a kid's bed, a bunk bed or something, you might want to make it a little bit wider. So you can technically make more of these size cuts out of your leftovers and then grow the fabric. Just don't forget you're going to need extra yardage for your borders, okay? So you're going to do that, like I said, to all three of your strip set rows. And then the best thing for us to do now is let's keep the families still kind of organized, right? So the next thing I'm doing is I'm kind of getting a hold of my big 11 and a half inch squares of all three. And this will be the first thing I need, but we need to cut our darks down first. So let me get ready to do that as well. Now, from our dark fabric, there's another little trick here. Down in my very bottom row, I also add in some of the dark fabric. Again, the light is shifting through the ocean, okay? Or through your theme. The other thing we need to do is we need to figure out how tall our strips came together. They're usually 12 and a half, but somehow we all have a different quarter inch seam allowance. So I say usually uh, 12 and a half, but you can see the darks are gonna actually fit in between the strip set rows, okay? So first thing we need, we need a three and a half inch piece off of our dark for later, okay? I'm gonna trim this down, but I think it's pretty close because I've been playing with these in my home studio. Just make sure it's perfect. And you know what? I'm gonna actually ask you to cut the width of this first, because if for some reason your, your fabric wasn't perfectly square, and when you trim that down, the three and a half inch, it looks like, is gonna be plenty in there. So I guess you could actually do either way. I just wanted to make sure you've got to have enough to fit in here. The bottom could have been two inches or three inches if you need it, okay? So, but I can see that I've got plenty on this one. So I'm gonna cut myself a three and a half inch. And if you can't, if you haven't figured out yet, Rob is always designing on the fly. I kind of like that challenge. I used to also do a lot of graphic design and start with a Sharpie marker. So I was always working kind of in the <laughs> realm of no return, right? Okay, here's a fun trick you can do. You can lay your block right on top. There. Then just lay your ruler here. And I'm going nice and slow to make sure I don't cut into my block. And I also made sure the ruler was square at the bottom of the fabric still. And now I know that my dark fabrics are exactly the width as my strip set rows were. Okay, so I need my three and a half inch for later. We'll also set that aside. The rest can go into our scrap bin. Okay, so now we're ready to cut up that dark fabric, and the math is a little bit different than the rest, so follow along carefully, right? The first thing I want to cut is six at one and a half inches, and be careful when you're cutting this, because you could end up using almost all of it. So I need six one and a halves, and I need these for the next portion of the demonstration anyway, so let's get these cut off of here. The rest of them I've already cut for you. But so if I'm doing, um, six at one and a half. I'm also going to do six at two and a half and I'm going to do then three. That's why I said it's kind of odd. I'm doing three and they're five and a half inch rectangles. Okay, so again, we've got these cut six at one and a half, six at two and a half, and three at five and a half. Okay, the first strips we're going to want are our little one and a half. So let's get the rest of these out of our way. Keep them handy. And now I go into kind of an assembly line format. So let me see if I can build these for you quickly. By the first step, I want you to take all three of your 11 and a half inch blocks you made from your strip set row and please sew on a one and a half inch strip of your dark onto all three of those blocks. Okay, that's the first step. Again, assembly line style. So you go ahead and go get that done. 
Hey, very well done. And I really like how we're working as a team today. You guys are sticking with me very well. So just a reminder, you've got your 11 and a half inch blocks with your one and a half inch strips now sew into all three of the strip set rows you're building. Okay. And now look, I've purposefully laid these out so that you can see them. My light, my light medium, and my dark medium in order. I'm at the top of the quilt. You guys are down at the bottom of the quilt over there. And now I've went and gathered the other cuts that I made, these ones from my strip set rows, right? So these we're going to inset next, still kind of assembly line style, but this is a good time for you to kind of make sure you have all of them organized like you did earlier with your rows to make sure that you're not accidentally having to use your seam ripper later. So the key to this is I'm now coming in and I'm finding the next group and these are from those um, five and a half inch cuts we did earlier. And you'll notice that these fabrics are the same family, but they are not from the family from the row they're starting with. So in other words, this is now let's call it a group A. So now group B lands here. And then we're just going to add these on. And we're going to add these on. What are you looking for? What are you checking, right? You're making sure that this fabric is different than these, but these are the same. Different, but these are the same. Different, but these are the same. Okay? I think you got it. Now, as you see, that's in the middle of all the rows, but here comes the switcheroo. The switcheroo is really cool. The switcheroo happens from those wide five and a half inch dark strips, and you only have one for each row. That's why you only needed three instead of six of them. Okay, so if you look at the quilt behind me, you'll see that the upper row is on the left hand side, the bottom row is on the left hand side. But the center row, or the middle row, is now over on my right-hand side. Can you see how that shifts? Here it is. Then we've got it down here again. And then all the way over here at the, at the end. Okay? So, what I normally do is at this point, I go ahead and I assemble this much of it so that when I'm done, this will be looking like this on the table. Okay? Easy enough. Now, just so you can see the entire layout in front of you, the next thing I'm doing is I'm grabbing my skinny strips that I had made earlier. These are the ones that are the two and a half inches, right? And now they're going to go in the row they haven't been used in yet. So if this is my light medium, there's my light medium. Oop. Here's my light medium. So therefore they must fit down here. Okay, and I'll show you this and I'm gonna get you a really good shot from the top here where you can see exactly what I mean. And again, I'm double checking my work and I want to point out a couple things here. Yes, on one side you will be sewing the strip set row to the dark. On the other side, you will be sewing two strip set rows together. This could be the only place in the entire quilt that your seam allowances may want to line up or may need to match up because you do. You end up right up in here with these nice little chunks and these blocks that come together. So yes, you'll have two strip set rows that touch each other on one side with that skinny and the wide, and then over on the other, yes, it's divided with the, with the dark. Once this portion is completely built, right, now we need to come in here and we need to get our two and a half inches that we made, and they're just gonna finish out each row. Okay, just like that. Make good sense for everybody? So at this point, this is the entire strip set row. Let's go ahead and assemble all of these because we're gonna need these completely done so that we can get into our theme fabric and our pillow panel or our additional theme row. So while you're working on stitching those together, I'm gonna reorganize and show you what you've just finished. Oh, you are doing a fantastic job. Look at how nice we've all done together. This is awesome. So here it all is constructed, right? And now once you have these, you really are ready to start on your theme rows. So let's just go ahead and slide these out of the way, but I'm gonna need to keep them handy. These now become my measuring devices, right? So let's just go ahead and slide this out of our way for a moment. And now we're gonna get into those pillow panels. And like I was saying earlier, you don't have to use a pillow panel. You certainly can, or any additional theme fabric will work. 
I happened to fall in love with this stuff. And not only did I fall in love with it because of the print and the detail, but I really fell in love with it because this black inner border is a half of an inch. Therefore, I can get you a perfect quarter inch seam allowance and still show you as much of the print as possible. Whew, that was a mouthful. So what I'm really trying to say is I'm gonna use the print to cut my quarter inch seam allowance, but I wanna go ahead and spin this around so that I can really pay attention to what I'm looking at here for a moment. So I'm laying my ruler right there where I can see my quarter inch marker. Not sure if you can see that or not, but my quarter inch marker is right on the black line where the black line meets the print on the other side. So I'm gonna cut this. Now we can set that aside. I've, I've used, I almost had chosen to use, but I have used one, two, three different blocks from that same print. Um, you could certainly use more if you wanted to. Let me finish trimming this down real quick so you know what I'm doing. Now, the key to this, a lot of this, as you saw, is a measure as you go kind of thing. So what's gonna happen now is whatever the raw cut of this is, is going to determine how tall I make my theme fabric. Rob, would you please speak English? I know what you're saying right now, right? So what I'm saying is I'm gonna measure from top to bottom here. Comes up, it's 11 and a quarter. So therefore, when I get ready to cut my theme fabrics, they're gonna also be cut at 11 and a quarter. Okay, so that way as I get ready to seam this fabric in, it fits perfectly. See how nicely that works? Now, where are we gonna put this stuff? This is very important. And when I look at those blocks, if you'll notice, these orcas are diving into the quilt. A really cool trick about art is you always wanna bring your viewer's eyes in. And creatures or cr things with eyeballs, wherever they're looking directs the viewer's eye as well. So these guys swimming in brings our eye into the quilt. Plus there is also some landscape or mountains up above. So I think that that should be higher in my ocean than deep underwater, right? I put my turtles in the middle because they're kind of looking straight at you. Oh, sorry, I couldn't, couldn't resist. And then the bottom, I've got my dolphins and they're swimming in this way. So I'm looking at that. And now if I look at my layout I've just done, my whales are swimming out of the quilt and therefore you might go out of the quilt too. So I wanna sew this to this side, right? So if I was preparing for this, I'm gonna get rid of that selvage. And yes, I'm gonna do this left-handed. No, I'm not left-handed, so I'm gonna be very careful. Okay. And then this will now be stitched to that side and that seam allowance is gonna disappear just like it did here in my finished one. You know what, let me slide that out of your way. See how nicely the black seam allowance disappears right there? And that's that bottom row. See how the dolphins are swimming in to my theme fabric. Now the cool thing about this, once you have this constructed and the one for the top row constructed, it's going to kind of help us make our middle row. So you're basically making two of these to start with, okay? And then this is how I do this. Once I have this completed, and I know this is gonna be positioned kind of between my middle and my bottom row. I find my middle and my bottom row. And I simply stitch it all together. I'm gonna to start on this end, okay? And I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam allowance across here. And when I am done and I have pressed my seams out and I am happy, I'm going to then take uh oh, I've lost my ruler. Well, I've got one of these handy. <laughs> I'm gonna take my ruler, lay it across here, and then slice that right off. That extra piece of fabric will generally fit right into this position, and the one that's created from the other theme row will fit right here in this position, 
I've asked you to get a yard. You could probably get away with two thirds of a yard, but sometimes again, you want to make this grow or you want to shift around your pillow panels. So with having a yard, you've got plenty of this for actually all three rows, but we can use our scraps for both rows if we like. Okay, so that's pretty darn simple. Now, if you'd like to know, you're all but done once you've constructed those. So let's just kind of talk about the way the rest of this quilt finishes off so you can see it all in one finished piece. So remember the one and a half inch strip from our light? Here it is up in the top. You've got a theme row with creatures swimming into the quilt. You've got your strip set row with your lightest fabric up here in the middle. You've got another theme row this theme row, usually you get your additional fabric or that pillow panel in the middle. Next one down, I have a strip set row with my lightest of my mediums in that center position. Another theme row, that's gonna have my um, whale or my dolphin swimming into the quilt. Way down here, bye, I've got, haha. -ha. The other theme row, the darkest was in that position. And then as a reminder, you've got your three and a half inch strip of your dark at the very bottom of the quilt. So I do, I now go through and I construct all of those rows together. Then I simply come back in and I add my outer border. Excuse me, <laughs> that wouldn't work. I add my inner border. Then I add my outer border. And I believe this is a two inch strip and I believe this is a five inch strip. I would have to check my notes to tell you and I'll make sure that's posted because we even have a pattern for you on this quilt if you are interested. So check this out. You just survived my very first quilting class ever. 2001 I made this quilt. I taught it in front of a group of people and actually some of those people are still speaking to me to this day. So hi to all my friends Emily and Anna and those of you who were in that class. I still love all of you. You're great. And as a matter of fact all of you watching the show doing your own strip, simple strip scramble you rock and roll as well so we will see you next time here at man sewing